Hello everybody! Today I'm going to tell you about what I think is the quickest and simplest way to make your chord progression sound absolutely fantastic. And what we're going to be doing is using inversions. Can you turn me the right way up now? Thank you. Let's go into the studio and I'll explain more. Right, so what is an inversion? That's what I'm going to explain first of all. Then we're going to dive in and look at exactly how you can use inversions to make your music much, much more interesting, give you loads more options when you're playing, whether you're a songwriter or a composer, or whether you're just sort of um, comping chords along to, uh, you know, a cheering song, inversions can make a huge difference. So in minutes, you'll be able to play and write better than you can right now. That's pretty cool. Did you notice the way I hedge? Because I don't know how many minutes this video is going to last. <laughs> I thought it was quite clever. Okay, never mind. Right. Okay, so we're going to go with some really basic stuff really quickly. If you don't know the basic music theory, you know, what, what a scale is and how chords are, then click the button and um, go and catch up with my sort of music theory in 15 minutes because that'll get you up to speed. So just very, very quickly, um, a refresher. Here's middle C. Hey, let's hear it for middle C. Uh, this is the scale of C major. All the white notes, yeah? Right. Now, if you want to form a triad, you will remember that you go note one, skip one, note three, skip one, note five. So you're playing notes one, three, and five, like that. That shape there is called a triad. Triad, because it's got three notes. And that is a chord of C major, and it's the root, the bottom note there is called the root, and that's C. The third, one, two, three, is E, and the fifth, that one, is G. Now, you can form triads on each degree of a C major scale. So there's chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven. Now we go into a lot more detail um, in both that 15 minute quick music theory thing, and of course in our Learn Music Theory course, which um, you can um, find details of underneath this. Right, so, now we know what a triad is, many of you know that already, let's proceed to inversions. Who says that the root always has to be at the bottom of the chord? Are the harmony police going to kick your door down and say, put that note back at the bottom of the chord or we're going to take you in? No, they're not. You can take a chord like this and take this cheeky third in the middle and stick it down there an octave below that is C, first inversion. That's all it means. An inversion is simply taking a note which is not the root and sticking it in um, the um, bass. Yes, you can do it with the fifth as well. So if we just play C and E there and we take that fifth note and we put it down there, that is E, um, C major second inversion, okay? And if, you have, if you're playing a um, dominant seventh chord like that, if you put that in the bottom, then yes, that becomes a third inversion. But look, so here is um, C, take the third, stick it down there, and you have a first inversion. Okay? Simples, so they say. Okay, here's another quick explanation of that. Right, let me explain this another way, and obviously the easiest way to do this is using three cars and a drone. Okay, so here we have a chord of C major. Here is the root note, which is C. Here is the third, which is E. And here is the fifth, which is G. Now, all we have to do to create a first inversion is to take the third, this one, and put it in the bass. Let's do that now. There, now you have it. E is in the bass, and this is a first inversion of C major. Right, having got that over with, now, um, I should say, um, last week I was telling you, um, giving some clues as to how to approach writing a great melody. Um, 
Uh, this week we're looking at interesting ways of spicing up your chord progressions. In a week or two's time, I'm going to be doing uh, a video about melody and chord progressions and how the two come together and how you can make them work better together and the conversation which goes on between the two. And I'm also going to be doing a live at some point in the near future. So if you're not one of my subscribers, join the family and ring, click the little bell and then you will be reminded when we do that. Yep. Okay. First thing, uh, you know I'm very keen on not making you learn anything you don't absolutely have to know. Um, but you will see that knowing what notes make up a chord in the key you're playing makes your life so much easier. Uh, so if you just know that a chord of C is C, E and G, a chord of A minor is A, C and E, etc. That's really, really good. Now root position you can just means where the, the, the um, what note is in the bass. So you can still have you can have different voicings where you um, distribute the upper notes in any old way you like, it's still in root position. How are all these wonderful ways you've promised me, Guy, that it's going to improve my music? Way number one, you're going to be able to write a really much more interesting bass line. Okay, let's take a basic chord progression and show you how an inversion can make it sound like a work of genius. No, not a work. Not a work of genius. Sunglasses of that. Okay, so if we're going to go chord one, chord five, which is G major, chord four, which is F major, and back to uh, chord one again. So. It's fine. It's fine. It's a bit bleh, a bit blocky. A bit falling <laughs> sleepy, yeah? Inversions are coming to the rescue. Okay, so what we're going to do, rather than go to the root position of five, we're going to go to the first inversion, which means putting the correct, the third in the bass, which is, in this case is B. So we're going to go from there to there. Already that sounds nice. Those two chords are better connected because this bass line is sounding smooth and swooshy. Okay. Now, let, we're walking it down. Now, what happens if we walk, we want to walk it down another note to A? Hmm. Is there an A in the chord of F? Yes, there is, it's the third. So we can do another first inversion, like that. And then we're going to walk it down one more to G. Is there a G in a chord of C? Yes, it's the fifth. So that makes it a second inversion. So now, instead of... Sunglasses of doubt have auto-engaged. We're going to make it better. Much better already, I think, anyway. Yeah? Hold it, you say to yourself, but I am not a keyboard player, I am a guitarist. Do these inversions happen on guitars as well? Yes, they do. Okay, it's guitar time. And as all of you know, I'm a useless guitarist, but this is just for the sake of illustration. Okay, so if we play um, a C chord, that is the root, that's C. If we want to play a first inversion, we need to put an E in the bass, and that's that note there. So if you just play the top four strings, you're getting a, e, a C first inversion. And if you add a G, that note there, um, to the um, top string, then you get a second inversion. It's got that distinctive second inversion ring to it, or you can have the first inversion by just playing the top four strings. There's lots of better guitarists, and uh, we'll show you thousands of different interesting chord shapes, which can give you all kinds of interesting variations on this. But that is the theory. Guitarists, you are not alone. But more importantly, if you play in a band, who is the person who decides what uh, inversion you're playing at any one moment? It's the bassist. This is your moment, bassist. You are in charge. Let me show you how that works in practice. Let's just put in uh, the guitar. Okay, so now, if we play this in root position, power to the bassists, we go like this.
Okay, what happens if we try and throw in some inversion? You don't want to do overdo it, um, and because it's actually nice to make a change. And if it, you're always using inversions, then it's it, well, no, no, it's not. It's just kind of a bit. Okay, it's, it's, it's a lower version. Okay, but it's sort of just. What we're trying to do is is give it some dynamics, make it sound a bit interesting and different, not always. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Let's do another one. Um, delete. What is this box here people keep on asking? It's Stream Deck XL, which has little key switches which control um, uh, Cubase. Root position, first inversion of G, first inversion of um, F, back, back to the root position. C, first inversion of E. I quite like that. So what we've done then is we've gone a couple of first inversions, then we've gone a couple of root positions, then we've used that first inversion, then back to um, root positions again. But we could equally, do you see, so you can sort of mix it up and you get something which sounds a hell of a lot better. Good, okay. Now, let's have a look at another possible reason why you might like inversions. Um, I should say that an inversion um, just means what note is in the bass. It doesn't mean all those are a first uh, root position of um, C. If I put the E in the bass, what goes on here, right hand, doesn't matter. It's still a first inversion. And that's a um, uh, second inversion. Um, in terms of what notes you double, traditionally with a major chord, you try not to double the third. So. You know, it, it, just don't get too hung up on that. Um, just start trying to use these inversions and look for an option. Okay, so let's go to reason two why you might like um, an inversion rather than um, um, keeping everything in root position. And it actually allows you... I've already mentioned the fact that inversions can join chords together in a much more fluid way because it gives you options which you don't otherwise have. It also lets you join together much more dis dissonant chords. Di I'm not dissonant, but chords which are miles apart harmonically. So for example, if we start with a chord of C, okay, I can then go to an A flat, first inversion, by keeping um, that C, C, A flat, C, E, and then go to F second inversion, and I get the, what is a fairly standard superhero um, type of uh, chord progression. But what about even more distant, uh, distant chords? So if you can take, uh, you remember the circle of fifths, okay, so for example C and G are next door neighbours on the circle of fifths, whereas C and say F sharp and C sharp are like, oh let's go and visit Auntie Mabel in New Zealand, it's about as far away as you can possibly get. It now dawns on me, a casing, of course, if you're living in New Zealand it's not particularly far. If you're in England, New Zealand's as far away as you can get, anyway, so you get the gist, okay, so if we wanted to go, for example, from C major to C sharp minor, what we could do is use an inversion. I like that chord progression. And it's a very strange one. It's going first inversion of C major, first inversion of C sharp minor. And because it's got that note in the root, in the bass, I shouldn't say root, um, which remains constant, it connects the two together. to an E minor, 
going to a C major, C minor first inversion, A minor second inversion. So you can connect all these chords, which actually, if you were normally doing it, sound, what? What is going on? Whereas you can use it, it's almost a bit like a pedal. So um, these, using inversions can, can help join chords together, glue chords together, which wouldn't normally be glued together, which is a really cool thing. Okay, um, another really great thing about inversions is, if you're the kind of person who likes uh, loading, you know, opening up a kind of the Ed Sheeran songbook or something and playing through sort of photograph or whatever and um, singing along, as I do with my um, elder daughter, uh, you just tend to, well, if you're me, you just use the guitar chord. So it says, well, okay, with, why does Ed Sheeran always write in C sharp? Okay, okay, you're just like, oh, Ed, well, anyway, okay. So you follow the guitar chords and all the rest of it. Now, sometimes you will have noticed this. C slash E, what? Is this a conflicted chord which doesn't know if it's a C or an E? It doesn't mean that. What it means is the first note means the chord, C. These are called slash chords. And the slash, the second note, uh, the second note is the bass note. So C slash E actually means C first inversion. If you see C slash G, it means second inversion. Basically. Now, not all slash chords are inversions. Um, it's only an inversion if the slash second note is in the chord. So, for, you could, for example, have C slash uh, or B flat slash C, which would be that. I'm not in love. Um, but that is a different kind of thing. But so slash chords are effectively, more often than not, they are inversions. So when you're playing along, um, just kind of using guitar chords, you can just chuck in a little inversions here, there and everywhere. Here. Beatles song which uses inversions, I just... Uh, here. Okay. Is that right? Anyway, it doesn't matter, but that's the gist. Um, that you can excite your audience by doing things they don't expect harmonically, and that's always a good thing. Pause for thought. Okay, right. Um, another thing which is uh, uh, really useful, there are times when you want to stay on the same chord for rather longer than the audience might like. They get bored very easily. So you go... First inversion. Do you see what I mean? So you can prolong that C note so that people don't actually fall asleep listening to you. And not having, having your audience not feel asleep, falling asleep when you're playing is, I've found an advantage, but not always possible. Uh, which probably says something about my ability as a performer. But there we go. Anyway, um, so this largely sort of rounds off our look at inversions. So I think I've largely covered all this. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Um, if you want to dive deeper into this kind of thing, I do two courses. One called Learn Music Theory, which is something like eight hours of this approach to learning music theory. Very practical, very hands-on. Um, hopefully you won't be bored, um, but you will learn quite a lot and come out of it um, feeling a bit more confident about being able to make your write songs, um, play music, whatever, and also how to write music, which is a sort of companion course, which is about how to write music. It does what it says on the tin. Okay. Anyway, that's all from me for this week. Um, hope you'll join me for those uh, future episodes, which I've just flagged up, and I look forward to seeing you then. Farewell. Learn Music Theory. It's fun, practical, and packed with clear explanations. A video course that will show you how music really works. Pitch, keys and scales, chord progressions and written notation, all explained in a clear, easy to understand way. 
Learn music theory. Quick, practical and fun. The way music theory should be.